Good morning and welcome to Aurora Early Adopter Series in June 2020. My name is Yasem Angadar and I'm a member of the ALC Performance Engineering Team and one of the organizers of these training series. These webinar series are created to foster discussion between the software and hardware developers and early users of that technology. Today's topic is OpenMP offload capabilities in the One API HPC Toolkit. And we are pleased to have with us Chang Min Kim. Chang Min Kim, from, uh, she's a principal engineer in HPC organization of Cloud Enterprise Solution Group, where she focuses on Intel software infrastructure advancement, HPC ecosystem development, and HPC-driven science discovery. She's an expert in computational physics, applied mathematics, and computer science, and has been developing parallel algorithms and HPC applications on generations of supercomputers. Her work has demonstrated the capability and advantage of Intel platforms for the advanced material research and broad HPC areas. She is the architect of QMC PAC, a US DOE flagship scale application and an acceptance application for the Aurora Exascale system. And Jamin, please take it away. Thank you. I'm Jungmin Kim, and today I will present OpenMP capabilities in one API HPC toolkit that implements the latest OpenMP standards to enable offloading computations onto GPUs. Like the title has a one API HPC toolkit, toolkit specific to Intel platforms from CPUs to GPUs. The materials are prepared to be as general as possible so that the audience can start writing HPC applications today and particularly for the Aurora system we are going to have in 2021. The agenda of today is listed here. I will go over some basic uh, uh, features of OpenMP, in particular for the accelerators, and focus on two main parts of the any offload programming, not only OpenMP, but any other offload programming in managing data movement and how we really express the parallelism so that you can take advantage of the massively parallel computing that you will be having on GPUs. And, and I will discuss some of the coming soon features that are uh, in the, uh, in, uh, coming in one API and also in OpenMP standards and we'll conclude. And I will pause uh, every now and then so that Yashi can give me uh, some questions or uh, uh, any uh, comments from the audience. So feel free to uh, send the, the questions and comments to uh, Yashi. OpenMP is an industry standard for multi-platform shared memory multiprocessing programming in C, C++, and Fortune. It allows the developers to write a portable and scalable parallel programs through compiler directives, library routines, and environment variables. OpenMP codes run on many platforms ranging from your laptop to large scale clusters such as Aurora uh, and a scale computer you will have in at NSF in 2021. The mixed or hybrid programming model of uh, MPI and OpenMP has been the foundation of many parallel applications of today. The OpenMP Architecture Review Board published its first API specification back in 1997. In the picture you are seeing, the old picture of SGI Crayors in 2000 system at NCSA, which happened to be the first OpenMP system there where I could run the OpenMP applications. So this feature is uh, quite impressive at the time, uh, about the consisting of 28 cores and later 256 cores having 32 gigabyte shared memory and a 64 gigaflops performance. And you can see that this entire machine now fits in a one socket of a Xeon cluster, or oh, way less than the one Xeon uh, socket. But what uh, still impressed me about OpenMP is that uh, by using the shared memory model programming of OpenMP, I was able to use the entire 32 gigabyte to solve the problem that otherwise I could not solve, or took much longer uh, in developing and also executing the code. Uh, moving forward, the support for SIMD and tasking, all these things have been added to OpenMP standards to support multi and many core CPUs, such as the Theta at RSA that is running uh, today. 
So open has OpenMP has been evolving quite constantly. The latest standards OpenMP four and five, uh, it provides the support for accelerations to run the code on heterogeneous system, and will drive many applications that will run on Aurora system shown uh, in this picture. The OpenMP will be a very critical component of one API uh, HPC toolkit, and this talk will cover the core concepts and capabilities of the OpenMP available in one API so that for you to have test drive and plan, plan your application development. There are many excellent materials out there. So, you, know, you will get the PDF file with the links to it. So LCF has a very comprehensive training materials on OpenMP from the parallel program on SMP all the way to offload program model. And then you can see the, uh, the, the tutorials with the real exercise uh, 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 that has also used for SC 2019. And then lately, the Zimin has given the, the pretty much the same talk I'm going to give uh, at one API at webinar. So please go to this website and really learn about the, 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 you know, the really the capabilities of OpenMP and then develop your code. So on the left, this is the schematic views to show the kind of nodes you will have on Aurora system. Uh, it has two Xeon sockets. And the particular design of Aurora system of today as planned will have three X8 GPUs per circuit. And the, the, the CPUs and GPUs are connected by next generation of a PCI bus. And they, we will have to think about how they are communicating data between. And, and also the, the, the six GPUs in this case. Uh, will be talking to each other and then allow to have the direct memory access so that the data transfer from different GPUs occur without uh, CPU being involved. And all the programmers have to be doing is to create the data structure so that the, the MPI runtime can be aware of where the data reside. Uh, this is a very typical architecture you will find with the GPU accelerated clusters such as Summit uh, or Chris uh, today. The coming DOE uh, literacy computers will have these very similar pictures in that with the GPU acceleration uh, through the host program. So now, how do we program these things to take advantage of these GPUs? So each GPU uh, is capable uh, uh, very capable with a very high bandwidth and compute density. We have, can achieve a very great acceleration of the application if we can map the parallel algorithm and manage the data very well. So OpenMP standards define a set of directives to instruct the compiler and runtime to offload the block of code to the device. And directives are the tools you have to express uh, not only to tell the, where the data uh, is and how data has to be moved, but also to express the parallelism in application so that the runtime can execute the, the block of code in parallel. A uh, loop can be broken up and subsets of the loop can be mapped on the numerous computer engines. And that's the mechanism we will be able to get the a great acceleration compared to the, any sequence execution. So they will allow you to tell the runtime where the data should be residing, should reside and move the data. And all this can be done incrementally using the programmer or OpenMP programmer. And then it allows you to maximally reuse the infrastructure of the application you have. So this is a quite different from any other offload program model you are aware of, such as the DPC++ or CUDA. Uh, they are more direct and explicit parallel programming model that you have to start from the bottom up to build up your parallel applications. So before we go to using the OpenMP uh, in your application, now we have to think about what kind of hardware we have and how we have to we can use it very well. So this is just much a reminder for you to think about before uh, deciding how to use OpenMP directives and the libraries to uh, parallelize your application. 
The first, all these GPUs have a very distinctive feature. They are quite massively parallel, although the, the, the compute engine themselves are very simple. And for instance, you know, we can look at the current generation of integrated GPU from Intel, which has 70 EU EU is one of the big part. And if we count the number of EU, the compute unit, the, the compute cores, however you call it, and the, the threads that are available and SIMD engine, we are talking quite big number. You know, just the simple math will give you 16, uh, a thousand, uh, uh, sort of the parallel task you can execute in uh, at once. And you can expect a huge increase for the future XA system. And also you can make the connection to the existing GPU architecture. So first we have a lot more parallelism than anything we know, at least compared to the, the standard host CPUs. Although there are many, many parallelism or the threads you have at your disposal, but they are not completely flat. Not all these things are going to execute it in parallel and 100% concurrently. They are uh, structures in a hierarchical way. We have the concepts of thread blocks and block of threads, and also the threads that are executed in a very synchronous way, SIMD or WARP and WAFOD. And different levels will define different memory model and consistent model and also how the pro for, for forward progress is made, and then what kind of synchronization is possible and not possible. And all these things have to be taken into account in uh, making your program to work on GPUs. So there is a huge amount of parallelism you have in the, you, at your disposal. One, another important part of the discrete GPU uh, of an Aurora system will be the distinct memory space between the host and GPU. So you can't assume that the, the data you have created on CPU will be available on GPU for you to consume. So we have to do something about it. So data have to be allocated properly, and then we have to decide where to move and when to move and how to move it. And those are the critical, and all these things can be handled through the OpenMP program for you to uh, orchestrate this data movement with the parallel program. You must be aware of the unified shared or virtual memory uh, capabilities in OpenMP and in many offload programming models. So they do uh, allow people or we, uh, programmers to not explicitly say move this data, put this data in a particular way, and then uh, the, the runtime compilers and runtime will take care of those data movement. However, they don't remove the data movement themselves. So there is a consequence that there is physics that involves the actual data movement. So we, we have to be very careful about how these data are being moved around implicitly and both explicitly. Not only do we have a distinct the, uh, memory spaces, we have also very heterogeneous and hierarchical memory. So already we have two distinct memory spaces we talked about, host and GPUs. But even within GPUs, it's not completely flat yet. It appears to be flat to, from the, to the programmer, but we have to understand that this contains multi-level of a uh, memory system from HPM all the way to register. And where, and then they are different in terms of the capacity, latency, and bandwidth. So all these things will affect the performance of your application. And with the, the directives and tools you have on OpenMP, you will still need to think about these uh, details about the architecture you are working on. Nevertheless, you will have all the tools you need to be able to express and then let the compilers and runtime optimize your executions on the uh, on heterogeneous structure, uh, systems. So before we move on, so we just have to think about how to do the offload and where to, what to offload and those things. And these are sort of the, the, the basic rules you are very familiar with. It's just a reminder to you. you know, when we start putting the uh, OpenMP program to incrementally change your code, we have to understand the, the entire application, and how acceleration of one part impacts the other part, and what the uh, acceleration uh, requires from the data perspective. 
And in order to optimize your execution, you know, how to really uh, combine different routines, and we may have to restructure the code so that we re- minimize the data transfer and maximize the, the utilization of the, the, the powerful compute and bandwidth you will have on the accelerator. Okay, so enough of the, the, the parallel programming, offload programming 101 you are so familiar with. Now let's get to the one API HPC toolkit. So this is the, the, the view you will have about what Open one API HPC toolkit offers and where the OpenMP compilers and runtime and uh, related libraries will be uh, provided within one API toolkit. So the gray box stands, you know, represent the HPC toolkit you will be able to use today. And there are, you know, these key features, and there are way more than OpenMP and uh, NKL associated with MPI we are going to discuss today. And it will come with uh, many other things, the direct program data parity plus plus, and even future language we may have. And there are a lot of libraries you can take advantage of using all, and then you write your C, C++ Fortran application, you know, using the programming model you have been uh, learning. And then the one API will be providing the compilers and also to come with the, the required runtime to run on uh, multiple architecture to uh, provide this point. So how do you use so one API compilers? Yeah, first, you know, you will be downloading the beta version uh, release today. Uh, of today, it will be beta 07. And you can visit the website. And it, can, it gives a lot of information and in, in the documentation about the one API as well as in, uh, many para, uh, about the parallel programming itself. Once you download and install one API HPC toolkit, then setting up the one API uh, environment will be very similar to uh, other tools you have been using through from Intel. You will source the uh, set vendor uh, shell. In, t- in this case, I'm using the bash standards to uh, bash shell to execute a lot of things. And then once you uh, source the script, then you will be able, you will have the path uh, set up so that you can use uh, compile your code. So there are sort of two ways compiling your uh, OpenMP target code with the next generation compiler ICPX. So you will see ICPX, ICP, ICX, and IFX, which stands for the C++ and C and Fortran compiler. Then you will be using the flag uh, to tell that that this code has to uh, generate the, the code that, ro- that will be running on devices. So this is the uh, necessary options you provide. Or you can use the ICPC, the, the wrapper to the next generation compiler by passing the Q next gen uh, option, then in, you will proceed with the compilation as usual. To compile an application using one MPI and OpenMP, then it's a little bit more involved, but nothing very different from what you have been doing uh, all the years. You will include the MKL uh, include directory, which is all set by the set variable environment. And then, then you will provide the link line to be able to use the OpenMP. So for the time, for now, until the beta seven, uh, the, the, the most performant uh, backend runtime will be OpenCL, so you will require to use uh, L dash L OpenCL to be able to use an MKL library. So everything is quite straightforward from that perspective. And there are these are the sort of three uh, environment variables where I found to be quite useful when you get started using one API, particularly with the GPUs. Uh, and you can set the debug level to see how the uh, your programming is executing and you can find out some details about how the code is running. And you can also set the profile to be true so that at the end you can know how much compute time is spent in counters and then the, the host time and how much data being uh, uh, exchanged throughout your run. And very often in, in while debugging and GPU is not the best <laughs> 
uh, a way uh, best to machine to debug. So you can set this OpenMP target offload to be disabled so that you can do all the most of the work on CPUs to uh, at the design and uh, development stage. So now let's do really open and let's think about how to write the open MP offload program. So I took the matrix vector multiplication example throughout this talk to address the core concepts we need to think about in developing the open MP offload application. So this is a very simple code and it is based on the, the code developed by the QNC team and and also the patterns that appeared from the uh, the HPC applications uh, to use the GPUs. So this is a simple matrix vector application, and you can find the, the very well known MK routines from uh, the, the GMV. So this is very simple. We have a matrix that represents the two dimensional array A with a certain size. And we will be in a multiplying matrix A with X and assigned to Y. Very simple. And you can write this code and then run it. From this serial code, now we start recognizing uh, the parallelism we have in this example. And you know, we can map these uh, uh, routines to use the parallel machines we have. A simple case will be using the OMP parallel 4 Pragma to tell that since the, the in the loop i can be executed in parallel without any synchronization or coordination with the rest other uh, index or subset of the index, now we can safely put OMP parallel for to indicate that, that this is the rule loop you can parallelize and execute in parallel. So what happened is that uh, in this OpenMP model will be as in a spawning a multiple thread, and each thread will be executing a subset of the loop, which is indicated in the blue. So you know, there are multiple ways to control how the execution happens, but the basic rule, uh, basic pattern is that we will uh, um, fork multiple thread and then execute the uh, uh, divide the, the loop space into multiple threads to execute to shorten the execution time. And then, you know, say you know, on the SIMD machine, we can also do uh, more uh, optimization because the OpenMP can uh, uh, tell the, uh, the program, the SIMD program can t and tell the compiler that this section can realize a SIMD vectorization uh, uh, intrinsics to execute this loop as efficiently as possible. And uh, one, an extra thing I, Throw in it is because now sum for each index i has to be summed over the multiple sum the uh, SIMD unit. Then you will be indicating the compiler that this particular variable will be local to uh, uh, this uh, loop within the, the thread region, but in and then also they have to be uh, reduced across the J and then later will be assigned to this uh, the, the final value. So what that does is that if not only we are spawning multiple threads, but now we are further improving the performance by utilizing the SIMD uh, units of the machine. It could be AVX512 and AVX2 or whatever you have. And the compiler will be deciding what is the best strategy to break up these loops to use the both of the thread and SIMD units as well. So this you have known in, nothing new about it. So what, and then of course, you know, there, there are many other things you will be doing in, in terms of the OpenMP by really lifting the parallel uh, fork joint root out so that you can do a lot more within the one parallelism. So this is one picture. So the only difference from the previous example is that instead of using OMP parallel four, we just move the parallel OMP parallel upward and then put many different routines within it. And also we sometimes throw the no way routine so that different parts of the code can be executed uh, uh, without really a synchronizing point. So this is a sort of schematic view is further really utilizing the, the parallelism and the compute engine of your system. 
on the right, and you know, we can even go further because by recognizing for some problems that the inner loop happens to be quite large, and that you have a way with more parallelism than you, know, you the I, for instance, then you know, one possibility is using nested parallelism. So here we are having sort of two levels of a, a parallel reason, and then by setting the OMP nested to be true, now certainly your execution will be uh, really doing way more parallelism, and then still uh, look, you know, dealing with the hierarchical parallelism you have in your algorithm to use this uh, the hardware CPU in this case. So that was the, the parallelism part, and it's going to be transferred directly into the GPU program. So what do we have to do with the, do the same computation using OpenMP 4.5? Then we started from the left about the serial code, and then you know, we are going to go to the offload code to use the GPU. So at the end, the code transformation is rather straightforward. And we have the, the uh, fundamental code structure you have started from the serial code. But a lot of things have to happen in order to actually do this computation efficiently on GPUs. First, we have to tell the compiler that this is the part of the code we want to execute on GPUs, not CPUs. So that happens by dedicating the OMP target clone. So we will be transferring the control of execution from host to a device. Once we create it, then we also have to think about the data. You know, if everything is created on device within the target, there's nothing to be done. However, we have written the code so that we created the array A and X and Y outside, but we will have to initialize then do something and then use it on the device. So the map clause will be the mechanism we will be using to tell the compiler where the data should be and how to prepare the data so they compute and that execution can be performed. So there is a, we have, to, so in this example, A and X are the read only values so that we only have to sort of move the data to GPUs but not copy back so that we don't have a, a useless uh, data copies. And in case of Y, we won't have to use the data on CPU because we are going to modify it entirely without uh, the, the initial value without being used. So we can use the FLAM clause to indicate the compiler that we will be using and uh, copying back the data, but there is no need to copy to the data. So that happens first of all. And once we create the data environment and the execution on on the flow, then now we have to actually tell the compilers how we want to parallelize your room. So the mechanism we are going to use on, uh, on GPUs will be creating teams. Uh, so we remember we have a GPUs which require the threads of blocks and block each block having a thread. So this is how we are going to map that logic on GPUs. So we will first create a teams. And then we are going to distribute the loop we are among the teams so that this loop I can be executed in parallel among teams. And then you know, we will be creating local variable that has to be summed within a team because of the, within uh, the threads in a team will be executing this sum uh, together while uh, so you know, the compiler will take care of how the, the reduction is happened but we have to create the value that to be reduced to, and then execute the parallel uh, uh, loop. The second level we have not, uh, we have now, so that uh, the loop J can be executed by the threads within a team. And some changes have to be made in this example because uh, before we were using the nice. Uh, C++ abstraction overriding operator to express the, uh, the, the code like. So right now, uh, so, you know, so this example, I'm using the bare pointer because I didn't want to go into the, the other code transforms, transformation to accommodate the operating, operator overriding, but the concept is the same. And, and then how the parallel algorithm works should remain the same. So what happens? with all these target 
and map. So it is the really the important step that sets the offload coding from and the, the standard thread based OpenMP parallelism that you know, we have to you know, use the target construct to tell the compiler to transfer the control and also to the manage the data movement. So there are the the target itself is the first step to tell the compiler you know, that this part is going to run on GPU. And the the the, the how to data map uh, from the host to the device will really can be controlled through the map clause. You know, we could just create or uh, you know, use the allocator or alloc you know, keyword to say that this part this memory has to be allocated on device, but it doesn't have to be created on but doesn't have to be initialized by anything uh, that is created on GPU on CPU. And we can tell the compiler to move the data to GPU and then you know, use the data on CPUs to uh, initialize the values on GPU. So the allocation and two are different from their perspective. The allocation doesn't involve any initialization, but two will be assignment. Two will also have an allocation and assignment. And that the from will be uh, the other part that we just do now want to copy back the data to the device. And there is also the close to from, which means that they now you start from the data on CPU and then at the end you will bring it back uh, from GPU. So all those things can be expressed with an OpenMP program and you will uh, use these things properly. So a couple of comments and a couple of things that I want to bring up with the data. So that is the basic the way of we control the data movement with OpenMP target map clause. But we can also uh, control the allocation or also the how the, the time or orchestration of the, the data movement using different uh, programs. The one example, one feature you have is actually using target allocator. So the, the, this is an example that when an, um, the block of memory is only consumed within the device and within the device code, you can use the OMP target allocator and then with the device ID you have queried uh, through other interface and then you will be uh, using um, that memory exclusively on GPUs and then you will later of uh, free that memory. Uh, that's, and the other very useful feature you want to uh, take advantage is about the data enter and exit clause, which separates the data or locations from, and then a deletion from the rest of the uh, logic of your code. And uh, you don't have to, uh, uh, and then you will be able to manage the data more effectively by sort of, uh, having less communication and also Oh, and, and so the, the, the way you will be doing is, you know, we can map the data. And then in this case, we will be using this, the allocating the data be on device wide, no initialization, but you can do the other type of the mapping. But once you are done and A and B are available on GPU, so uh, you can execute and write your code to do a lot of work. And occasionally when the host requires to use the data to uh, do other computation, you will be updating the particular segment in the part of the memory and then keep going. And then you can free the data uh, at the end of the run. So this is uh, one way of controlling and reducing the data movement. And certainly all these things can be nicely encapsulated in your allocator, special, specialized allocators to reduce the code clutter, also further optimize the data, data transfer. And sometimes you can use external library to manage those data movement quite effectively. So there are utilities for you to use to control the data transfer and hope you do that. And once you are doing done, then now it becomes the same problem of how to parallelize your algorithm. And there are multiple parallelism you can use on GPU, but the most powerful feature of GPU will be the data parallelism. 
therefore maximizing their parallelization will give you the much the highest uh, gain or acceleration you can get uh, by adopting the offload program. The, the data parallelism, you know, we even have the programming uh, model called DPC plus plus because data parallelism has become very important and the, the one of the uh, key uh, features of the new hardware, then we want to really exp and allow you to express the data plot parallelism as well as you can. And also the runtime and the compilers can figure out how to run them very effectively on GPU. The key point about the data parallelism is that the, it, it likes to use in the, in the same data, but to break them up so that many subsets can be executed in parallel without synchronization or barrier. And you know, if you can do the synchronous computation without branching, that's always the best. And then you can rely on the, the CMD engine uh, to further optimize your execution. And it's very possible because we have so much parallelism on GPUs, the larger data sets we deal with, the better and the gain will be. And the, until we really saturate the, the, the roof line of our, your uh, GPUs, you can pretty much pack as much work as you can to perform the data parallelism. So on the left is the one case in which we started with the GMB, which has the parallelism at the team level, uh, but uh, then and then the parallel for the thread level and the SIMD engine to execute the inner loop. So that was good, but uh, so it, it will be uh, uh, one opportunity. However, you know, the right example would be way more data parallelism you can have instead of just to having N teams and then rely on the, the limited threads you can have with a team. Now you can pretty much bundle all the loops you have or collect. This, this, this is called super programming that you are creating teams of threads and then, then over this, uh, the, the loops, which is N uh, square of a parallelism and execute those them in parallel. So if the body uh, of this loop has a no data dependency and the, the rate uh, and synchronization needs, then you will be really taking advantage of the massively parallel computing units you have. And without really thinking about how all these new hierarchical structures are being managed by runtime, but only thing you are doing is expressing your parallelism, how much you can uh, map those things on the GPUs. So what if, on the other end, you don't have enough data parallelism? Not every code has the Shimagangas loop or multiple loops that you can collapse and then map on GPU. And then, uh, and then, in, in a way, GMB is one example that is not particularly uh, parallel routines. As you can see, that we only have a, a you know, the, the, the only certain number of teams can be created and then within the team, only certain number of parallelism can be executed effectively. But nevertheless, the, we can express those hierarchical parallelism and then map on the, uh, those black, uh, the logic you know, very naturally through the hierarchical parallelism here. So this is the case to when the, you don't have enough parallelism to express as the the mega or the super programmer, and then we have a data dependency within the team. In the team. In this example, uh, we are using the sum computed by the, the first step to be able to do the, the another computation. So why you know can you know? Of course, we can express this as a two target uh, uh, to get to target close, but you know that cost. Uh, uh, overhead and then it adds up, uh, uh, it slows down or at least reduce the max, uh, return. So, and also we are potentially using the data locality we have within the team and so on. So certainly that the hierarchical parallelism, uh, with the teams and then, uh, parallel four will give you a natural way of expressing, uh, those hierarchical parallelism and that's to the parallelism you have. But, you know, GPUs are not particularly optimized to these things are uh, very efficiently in compilers and runtime we'll have to do a lot of things and do uh, care and use with care 
and then think about what the consequences are. And if you can express your parallelism in a much more flatter way, as you saw in the, the collapse clause, that will give you a better gain or higher gain. And you, know, you have to think about how you want to express your applications. And then, you know, sometimes that's not even enough. You know, we can do the collapse and then the mega uh, terrorism and also have hierarchical terrorism. But very often your problem is architecture such that we may have to run many instances of those targets together or multiple streams or multiple queues. So that's it can be done through utilizing the mixing the host to select and parallelism and GPU parallelism. So this example, I can took just the OMP parallel reason to create the parallel host thread reason. And each thread will create its own target stream. And then we will be able to execute a multiple target reason through the host parallelism. Or you can write a code such that no eight is uh, uh, in the given with the target so that the execution on GPUs can be overlapped with other things you might be doing on CPU. Or you know you can actually you know, send the, the target, multiple target, and then later combine all the, the, the ensuing target uh, task uh, to uh, complete your task. So, this is another way to increase the parallelism and they use the GPUs more efficiently. And it could have been done through MPI and all these things are available to you within OpenMP standards. Rajiv is asking if the performance would change if we use uh, GPC++ versus OpenMP offload. It really depends. <laughs> Meaning, uh, so, once the parallelism is expressed in a uh, proper way, and the, meaning the, the divided uh, teams and then uh, the, the, how many the threads within the team is executed. And since, uh, one thing I have not uh, noted in this example is we didn't put on how many teams will be created and how many threads per team. So there are means to control it. So once those things are properly done, at the end, the run in you know, the execution will be very similar, and you know pretty much the all the the burden is on you in the sense that how you actually architecture your parallel application to those to actually you know, do the computation. So uh, we will see, and it depends on many things, but fundamentally there isn't any reason why you should expect a lower performance with OpenMP target. And we'd like to hear about those cases so that we can optimize the performance. Moving on, so uh, this is now. So there is, you know, you have seen the the explicit data and need in expressly expressing how to move the data from device to host, host to device, and sometimes in both. Uh, there is a new feature in OpenMP that uh, the it allows you not to do that. And so that's through the OMP requires a program that, you know, and so you, the compiler will recon, you know, uh, recognize this require unified shared memory and that there is no really need to explicitly uh, send the data back and forth once you require the, the, uh, the compiler uh, required to use the unified shared memory. You will, the OpenMP target or locator will handle the data movement uh, in, to a large degree. And a lot of things will happen um, behind the scene. And then you will be allocating the data and then, then uh, they're free in the same way. But the difference from the previous example is that we don't have to uh, have the map close or device ID in this case and uh, the runtime will in the, I mean, once the compiler can support uh, this feature then, and then hardware uh, support the feature, then all you have to do is really uh, creating the, uh, just the target environment and then focusing on the parallel algorithm itself. But again, I re really remind you about the fact that 
this does not mean that they don't, data don't move until we really have a truly integrated GPU solution, which we which might have, and maybe we have somewhere uh, some the systems we have those things. But the discrete GPU nature means that there is going to be always the bottleneck involving CPU and GPU communication. So do aware of the fact that this uh, does not remove the, uh, the, the, the cost of data movement is just a high or at least to reduce the uh, complexity in, in implementing your application. So certainly this is a great way to get started with your application because all we have to do is the, the data allocations and the allocation in which can be nicely encapsulated in any abstraction you have. But you know, we have to recognize that, that still data have to be moving and that we want to be able to uh, you know, create in the incrementally you know, or at least to find out the, where the bottlenecks are and how to resolve it. And still the duty on us will be to not to do excessive data movement and optimize those data management. With the unified shared memory and all that, and uh, additional feature we want to bring up is about the interoperability between OpenMP and DPC uh, class. One more question mm -hmm. before you move on to the next topic. So um, the question is, can one provide any hints to prefetch data while using USM? Uh, there should be a, a memo device and prefetch capability. Uh, and and that should be possible. And I did not have that example, but uh, I can get you the pointer to that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so this is one example. So, uh, and you can ask why would you uh, do that? Uh, I think the, the, the first question is a very good example. So how do we know that OpenMP offload code is doing as well as uh, we think we should? And what is the the limit and the, what is the capability and how much can we do achieve uh, performance on a, you know, of you, uh, given for a given algorithm? And one way to find out is actually doing it. And the, the great capability enabled and the feature OpenMP provides you well, was that the, the minimum code change you have to make to be able to do the OpenMP. So, and you know, you will start from OpenMP code as we discussed, and we may want to explore how the DPC++ uh, will perform for the same routine. Then you can put those things together and compare them. And also sometimes, you know, there are really great optimized DPC++ libraries or OpenMP library you want to use and how you can combine them. That's possible through the uh, in, uh, this in the unified mem uh, the allocators and device and, and all these the, the the features you are you are given through the, uh, the allocators both in DPC plus plus and OpenMP offload and you will be able to combine those things. So this is uh, the new feature that we, is has become available with the recent release. So. Uh, Please and, and think about it and then try and then compare the performance. That would be a nice things to try. So now we talked about GMB, but always in the, at the end of the day, I will ask why would you like to write your own GMB? Why don't you use the, the library routine? If then that will give you much better performance. So then this is the example how you would use the MKL to do the and then use the very optimized routines I implemented in MKL. So I switched the example from GMB to GEM, but there is no big difference from it. So MKL routine in, with OpenMP code will be just like that. So the, you know, this code can be dropped into your OpenMP code and the performance. So a couple of things happen. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, first, you know, we have to include the file. So, uh, in addition to the standard MKL header file, you will be required to add OpenMP offload header file. Not a big surprise. But otherwise, this code looks pretty much the same OpenMP code you have seen with the GMB. You will be telling the data, you know, you will start the target 
and then we will map the data. So in this case, we are separating the data mapping and then actually doing the computation. This is a, a different example we haven't covered until now. But now everything is similar. Yes, yeah, so now but one difference is that Amker has, has to know that we are going to use the, this Amker function on GPUs, not on CPU, or even on, in, in, in MPL, MKL can decide to use the most optimized routines that is specialized on the given architecture. The OpenMP uh, target variant will tell uh, the compilers that the used GPU computation is, in, is going to be used uh, through the variant. And then you have to told uh, that, that these data are device pointers, not uh, at the host pointers, so that uh, we can use the, uh, directly uh, use the MKL routines. And there is a, this optional no wait, so that in case when this gem B and gen computation can be overlapped with the rest, then you can do So this is pretty much the, the normal uh, the code you will be writing with OpenMP, and the main difference will be just putting the variant and then the, denoting the device pointer. And then the rest of the code will be very much like the one you have been using on CPUs. And you have seen how you will be able to use it. So to conclude, so I hope that you know we cover the basic things you have and your disposal to write the very high, highly performing uh, parallel applications on uh, Intel GPUs and hopefully actually on any GPUs with a proper compiler. So to conclude, I just want to invite you to try out the One API Toolkit and you can even start the cloud and then start in the cloud and give it a first try and let us know what you find or the issues and the questions you have. And I will close. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Johnny. So uh, we have one question right now. One API is, uh, one is asking is one API open MP4.5 or is it 5.0? Uh, it's, it's currently 4.45. And then partially the five point is being implemented and the goal is going to be have a uh, five to be complete by the end of the goal to end release. Um, so certainly it's a 4.5. So you have to keep in mind about that. There's a, you are aware of a big change from four to four, five, four point five, but the five, the features that will become available with the five will be coming soon. And the variants and all these things are one of those. I would like to thank again uh, Yanim for her a nice presentation. And if you guys have suggestions or questions, please don't hesitate to email us. Um, thank you. And you have the slides. If you have more questions, please make sure to email me. Thank you so much.